Hello and good morning. So today we're going to continue with our Player Imports series and we're going to look today at adventurers and the trades good resources that each of them uh, allow you to receive through special missions. We're also going to cover special missions and adventurers and just touch a little bit on buildings, although that's going to be in the next episode so that I cover that properly. But to, for today, to kind of cover everything we need to cover, I do need to talk about buildings a little bit. So we'll just hop into player imports. Um, as you can see, I've just got the one mission out at the moment. Now, as I said before, there's a little bar up here that says visitors. Um, now, at the top in this section here, it will display which adventurer or indeed adventurers are in your port. This is completely um, based on random you can get one, sometimes you can get three even. Uh, below that is the Captain for Hire and the Black Marketeer, which I might possibly just quickly cover because I don't think I have covered that. But anyway, for now, the bit we're interested in is the Visiting Adventurer. Now, there are six different adventurers, um, and the way that these begin to appear in your port is that you have to have level 90 in the skill that relates to them. So... The skills that you need level 90 in to unlock the various adventurers are fishing, slayer, runecrafting, herb lore, prayer, and thieving. Now, what that allows you to do is to receive the adventure in your port. Now, today you can see I've got the occultist, um, and that is the runecrafting equivalent um, adventurer. So, if I just pop into my missions and go to the special voyages here. You'll see that I have two missions here which involve the occultist. Now, one of them is for a scroll piece which relates to the sea singer armor, or in this case, it's actually the tetsu because in my um, port management, I'm actually selecting to get the tetsu pieces at the moment. And the other mission is just simply uh, steel plate and chimes reward which is a little bit more than you would get from just the standard voyages so if we have a look at the equivalent uh 600 200 steel plate whereas if we pop over to this one this is 1800 700 and that's 9600 for two whereas this is 9000 so you can see that generally you're going to get a bit more for your basic missions via your adventurer now the other types of missions that the adventurers allow you are, as I say, steel plate and chi ones, um, scrolls. They also give you trades good resources missions, which we'll touch on in a second. And they give you XP missions uh, in their equivalent skill. So I think the other day when I got Sea Singer, I just received a XP mission that I uh, received. So basically, if you send it out, there'll be a little book here in place of where the scroll is. And it'll just say 25,000 underneath it. So what that means, if you send the mission out and it comes back and it's success, you'll get 25k runecrafting XP in this instance, because obviously it's the occultist. So um, if you get to the stage where you've kind of, you've built your sea singer armor or whatever, you've built all your player imports armors, uh, so you don't need to really gather the trades goods resources for them. Um, it's quite beneficial to send the missions out if you get XP ones, because... 25k runecrafting for 30 seconds work to click on a ship and send it out is pretty darn good. Um, similarly, you know, if you're doing Slayer fishing, right, Herbler and Prey, yeah, you can get the thieving's not too slow, but I certainly will always send out uh, XP missions whenever I can get them just because it's, it's good XP. Um, I will link in the description again this RS Wiki page, which kind of has level requirements here. And I think somewhere a bit further down. It shows the name of the adventurers, um, wherever they are. I'm sure they're somewhere on here. Anyway, I'll put a link in the description to this um, because it's quite useful to look through. And, yeah, you can sort of see what types of adventurers there are and the re re revelant <laughs> required skills. <laughs> so, yeah, for now we'll just look over at the trades good resources. So on the other side of the bar there, to the visitors, you have the resources bar. Now we've talked about the various resources in port resources here, chi being, uh, chime, sorry, being the currency and the 
bamboo, gunpowder, slate, cherry wood, jade, and of course stainless steel being the resources that uh, refer to the regions. So obviously if we go back to the, the regions here, I've obviously got them all unlocked. And obviously if we go into the port management, uh, all of these regions, obviously they line up with those. So I'm in the pincers, which is why I always get the stainless steel missions. Um, below this, here are your trade goods. Now these appear basically, well, you get them via your um, adventurers. Now, not all the time, admittedly, but most of the time, yes. So you'll quite often get special missions come up and they will be for, say, five chi globes or, I don't know, five lacquer or five plate or whatever, sometimes ten. And that's how you get them uh, via the special missions. Now, you also get them as standard missions. So today I haven't got any. Uh, sometimes I might have another mission with the occultists that will be for five chi globes or whatever. But um, if I siphon through here, the chances of getting a trade goods mission are quite high. Uh, generally, I get one, maybe sometimes two a day. I mean, knowing my luck, I'm not going to get any because I want to prove a point. Yeah. Brilliant. Good fight, Jagex. Thanks for that. Um, but often you'll get, say, a mission that will pop up for ten plate or five plate. Um, and basically just these resource goods. Now you can see that I've obviously got quite a lot of plates stored up, uh, a good wadge of lacquer, and I've got very little chi left. Obviously I used the chi to make the chi singer the other day. Uh, the lacquer here is what you create the uh, range armor out of, uh, the death lotus I think it's called, and then the plate is what you make the melee armor out of, which is the tetsu. Um, now, the other ones here, Ancient Bones are for Scrimshaws, and the Spices are for Rocktail Soups. Uh, I will get onto those in a second. For now, I just want to kind of cover the main three. So, as soon as you unlock an adventurer that gives you these resources, you will start to get both the special missions via your adventurer, and you'll also get them in your normal missions. Uh, now... As I say, typical me, didn't get one when I wanted to explain it. But quite often, um, most of the lacquer that I've received is from the uh, just special, normal voyage missions, not so much special ones. The, the first adventure I got was the convict, who is the thief. So you need a level 90 thief uh, to unlock an adventure. And so that's the first one I got. Um, it's worth me saying, actually... You won't unlock player imports until you have one level 90 in one of those six skills that I mentioned, which are these, just again. Uh, so Fishing Slayer, Ring Crafting, Herb Lore, Thief Prayer. So that's how I got my kind of first adventurer. Um, and anyway, yes, certainly the, the Convict does give you lacquer missions, for instance. Uh, the Occultist gives you Chi missions. Um, and then each of the, the various... Um, captains sorry no captains adventurers will give you different types of mission as well as getting them the, all of the resources through your normal missions so the reason i'm obviously collecting plate a bit more heavily than lacquer is the fact that i obviously have a lot more of the tetsu scroll pieces and that's the, the next one i want to make now to make these armor pieces this is where i'm just going to touch a little bit on buildings um you need to have made a workshop. Now I'm not going to jump straight into making buildings and upgrades just yet because I want to do a whole separate episode on this but for now this is your workshop and you've obviously seen me banking via there but this workbench here is where you make both your sea singer and your range gear so obviously if we go to untradeable magic gear this displays your sea singer and then obviously there's the tradable version, which I really wouldn't recommend making because it's awful, and sells for about 3 GP, uh, good fight Jagex. And obviously the untradable range gear. Now you can see here that immediately there's a little padlock that is simply because I don't have the crafting level to make it. So you need 90 crafting. Whereas if I go to untradable magic gear, obviously I have 90 rune crafting. Um, so what this will show you per piece is your requirements. So you need level 90 runecrafting to make these 
you need to have all four pieces of the hood, which I do, RuneScape member, and then you need here, the cheat codes. So I used all mine, so I can't make one at the moment. Um, and again, if I go to untradable range gear, I will actually have, for instance, I'll have the lacquer to make the uh, head, but I obviously don't have 90 crafting just yet to make it. Although I also don't have the pieces. So that's where you make both the ranged and the mage gear. And here on this anvil is where you make your tetsu. So if we go to untradable melee gear and go to, say, the plate, um, I need 100 plate to make that. And I think I've only got 90. But I could, in theory, make the hood or the helm, should I say. So for each of the um, gears, you need 100 for the top, 40 for each helm, and 60 for the legs. So to make full player imports armor set, you need 200 in each of your trade resources. Now that might seem like quite a lot, obviously, because you only get sometimes five or ten at a time. That it, whilst that's true, um, you also get story missions via each of your adventurers. And again, I'll pop a little link in the description. Now, when you unlock an adventurer, you basically get one story mission per region. So each adventurer has six story missions. Now, because I recently unlocked uh, 90 Slayer, I'm working my way through my story missions for uh, the Slayer adventurer whose name has just popped out of my head. Now, if you look here, you can see that I've met four adventurers. And if there's six missions each, six, twelve, eight, and 24, good maths, you can see that I've got one more mission to do. Now, this is where it gets to the good bit, because when you get to the sixth mission for each adventurer, i.e. in the last region, because there's six regions, you then get um, a bonus resources via each adventurer. Now, it's generally 30 of a particular type of resource. So if you get, you know, obviously 30 steel plate uh, is going to, sorry, 30 plate, not 30 stainless steel, 30 plate is going to do me quite a lot of favours because obviously that's going to bump me up to 120. Um, I got quite lucky with Chi as well because I managed to get quite a few end missions with Chi, obviously with the occultist. So another little tip that I'm going to give you just while we're on the subject is this guy here, the Jade Merchant. You get him from, I think, the fifth region. Now, his merchant ability... Improve the goods received or retrieved from a mission by 30%. Now, if you can manage to stick a Jade Merchant on your sixth mission for each adventurer, you're going to end up obviously getting 30% more than you sent it out for, which is going to be quite a lot. So um, somewhere in the region of, well, 9, 10, you might get if you manage to get the Jade Merchant on your voyage. Now, the thing here, and another really good tip here, is that once you send out the sixth mission, it's obviously going to be on quite a high requirement. So let's say it's 10k on each of the skills. So you need 10k morale, seafaring, and combat. That's obviously a high level requirement. If you fail the mission, you won't not get it again. So my advice would be to send out the mission regardless of the amount of percentage you can get it to and always put the Jade Merchant on. Because even if you fail the mission, you will get the mission again. It will keep coming up until you complete it. So there is actually no point in not putting a Jade Merchant on because you will get yourself a lot more resources for essentially nothing. So what I would do is always send a Jade Merchant out on any... Um, final story mission there are also just to touch on when you've got all of the adventurers there are some duo and trio missions where your adventurers go out together if you've got them both in port and you'll be able to do trio missions which also offer quite a hefty reward so keeping a jade merchant um at your disposal is something i would really recommend just so that you can pop it on um, and hopefully get yourself a load more trades goods for you know not a lot of work and as i say 
even by using the Jade Merchant who doesn't have particularly good stats, you're obviously going to be costing yourself a bit in percentage completion. Um, it's very much worth it. This is one of the only times I'll be telling you to not worry about mission success. As I say, purely because the worst thing that you can do is you can send it out on, I don't know, 60% and it'll fail. Yeah, okay, you could run the risk of losing a crew member or, God forbid, even a captain. Um, but I think risk-reward, it's worth it to do it just to get your extra trades goods. So I think that's kind of covered everything that I really want to cover today in terms of the adventurers and trades goods resources and obviously what they're used for. Um as I say, I'll pop a couple of links in the description just so you can go and see the adventurers and all their special missions um, and what you can expect to get and obviously what types of special missions they are and all the rest of it because I don't need to sit here and explain them all to you. You know, you can just go and look it up. So for now, I will say goodbye and I hope to be bringing out another Slayer um, post-update kind of video today where I look at a few more common slayer tasks and see what it's like. So for now, I will say goodbye and hope you've enjoyed the video as ever.